Hello everyone. Today's my discussion is on isotonic and isometric contractions. So learning objective of this topics are what is the contractile component, parallel elastic component and series elastic component. Then define the isotonic and isometric contractions with the examples and differences between the isotonic and isometric contraction and define optimum length, resting length, equilibrium length and initial length. Now in my previous lecture we have already discussed about the property of the skeletal muscle and that is excitability. And now I am discussing about the contractility. So contractility that is the response of muscle to the stimulus and contraction that is defined as internal events of the muscle with change in either length or tension of muscle fiber. And the contractile response of the skeletal muscle can be discussed under the headings like isometric versus isotonic contraction, single muscle twitch and factors affecting force of contraction. So in this lecture, I am discussing about the isometric versus isotonic contraction. So after discussing the process of the muscle excitability and contraction, it is very necessary to know about certain aspects in relation to skeletal muscle like contractile and elastic component of the muscle, then muscle length, types of the muscle fiber and motor unit. So contractile component, contractile component that represents thick and thin filaments present in the myofibrils like myosin and actin filaments and it is considered to be viscous in nature and it offers no resistance to stretch and it is unable to return its original length after it has been shorter. And the contractile component that comprises about 60% of the total muscle protein. Now series elastic component. The series elastic component that refers to that elastic tissue of the muscle which is present in series with the contractile component of the muscle and it consists of elastic tendon of the muscle. So in this figure here this is a series elastic component and this one is a contractile component actin and myosin filament and series elastic component that is a elastic tendon of muscle. Now in resting condition the series elastic component offers resistance to passive stretch and explain how the muscle is able to contract even when its external length does not change. For example, isometric contraction. So in figure number B, this is a this image that shows isometric contraction. So length of the muscle fiber remains same, but there is a tension that is developed in muscle. And it also explains how the muscle regains its original length after contracting isometrically. Then parallel elastic component that refers to elastic tissue of the muscle which is attached parallel to contractile component. So this is a parallel elastic component. This is parallel to contractile component. And that is represented by structural elastic tissue of the muscle such as connective tissue sheath of muscle, sarcolemma and gap filament. Now presence of this component explain why the muscle regains its original length after it is passively stretched and that is seen in figure number C and D. In an isotonic contraction, this component gets folded up and it offers some resistance to passive stretch. So series elastic component and parallel elastic component combinedly form about 40% of the total muscle protein. 
Now since the muscle is not a il complete elastic component, therefore it does not obey the Hooke's law. Thus, when a resting muscle is stretched, the tension produced is not proportional to the stretch applied. Now concepts about the muscle length. So following concepts about the muscle length will be useful in understanding certain characteristics about the muscle contraction. So optimum length refers to that length of the muscle at which it will develop maximum active tension. Then resting length. Resting length of the muscle represents the length of the muscle during relaxed state under the natural condition in the body. And the resting length of many muscles in the body is in optimum length. Equilibrium length refers to length of a relaxed muscle cut free from its bony attachments. And initial length is length of the muscle before it contracts. Then types of contraction. Muscular contraction that is classified into two types based on the change in the length of muscle fiber or tension that are developed into muscle. Isotonic contraction and isometric contraction. Now isometric contraction. As the name indicates, iso means same, metric means measure. Now in this type of contraction, the length of the muscle remains same, but the tension is developed in the muscle. And so there is a no movement of the object. Now this is the figure of isometric contraction. So in this tension developed and muscle length. Okay, there is a no movement. So when the two ends of the muscle are fixed and muscle is not allowed to shorten, then the isometric contraction of the muscle results on stimulation. For example, contraction of the anti-gravity muscle to maintain tension in erect posture. At the onset of such a contraction, there is a no load opposing the contraction and contractile components shorten which stretches the series elastic component causing increase in tension which reduces the performance of the contractile component so that reduces the speed of shortening and the tension which the muscle can develop rises to its maximum and speed of the shortening is zero. Now work done is equal to force or tension that is developed into the muscle and multiply by distance. As the distance through which the weight is moved is very small in this situation. Therefore, very little external work is done by the muscle and that is almost negligible. Example of isometric contraction of muscles is contraction of the muscles which help in maintaining posture against the gravity and contraction of the arm muscles when trying to push a hole if you pick up the weights and hold them stationary in front of you. Then isotonic contraction. As the name indicates, iso means same and tonic means tone or tension. In this type of the contraction, the tension in the muscle remains same whereas its length decreases. Since the muscle length is shortened, so the external work is done in isotonic contraction. Isotonic contraction are of two types, concentric and eccentric. In concentric type of isotonic contraction, muscle shortens while exerting a force during climbing up a stairs. And in eccentric contraction, lengthening of the muscle occurs while resisting an external load, for example, during walking down stairs. Muscle consists of contractile element in parallel with elastic component and in series with another elastic component. Parallel elastic component that represents the elasticity of structural elements other than the contractile protein and tendon that is a series elastic component. Now if the muscle is suspended vertically from an attachment to a spring 
it can be stretched by attaching weight to the lower end and the tension that is developed in the muscle it can be measured and this is a passive tension because here the myofibrils that acts as only passive viscous elements and have very little resistance to stretch and the resistance to stretch mainly resides in series elastic component and to some extent in parallel elastic component now as shown in the figure d in isotonic contraction the contractile component and parallel elastic component are shortened in this figure both are shortened but the series elastic component does not stretch further producing a visible shortening of the muscle any contraction that creates force and it moves a load now on stimulation the contractile components convert chemical energy into mechanical work and therefore muscle shortens and the characteristics of the parallel elastic component and series elastic components are unchanged during the contraction when the muscle shortens its speed of shortening depends on the force that opposes shortening the weight of the object to be lifted examples of the isotonic muscle contractions are contraction of the leg muscles during walking and running contraction of the muscles while lifting a weight and contraction of the muscle during flexion of the arm so in this figure you can see in isotonic contraction there are two types concentric and eccentric and this is a isometric contraction so isometric contraction occurs in biceps brachii when the muscle is holding the weight still and biceps brachii develops a tension and stays the same length and it stops flexion and extension of the elbow so there is a no movement and you hold this dumbbells stationary in front of you so there is a no any change in the length of the muscle but tension that develops inside the muscle now isotonic contraction there are two types concentric and eccentric now in concentric concentric contraction in the biceps brachii during the upward phase of exercise and biceps brachii produces tension and shortens and it pulls the forearm upwards to cause flexion of the elbow so there is a movement occurs when you pull your forearm upwards with load now in eccentric contraction in the biceps brachii during the downward phase of exercise biceps brachii produces tension and lengthens and it slows the lowering of the forearm and controls the extension of the elbow so here there is a movement occurs and the angle between this joint is wide and here it is a narrow so what are the differences between isotonic and isometric contraction so isotonic contraction it is a type of contraction where the length of the muscle changes but tension remains constant and in this the length of the muscle fibers remain same but tension changes in isotonic contraction muscle does external work lifting a load but muscle in isometric contraction the muscle does not do external work for example contraction of the anti gravity muscle only for maintaining posture then in isotonic contraction when the muscle is stimulated myofibrils contract contractile component actin and myosin filaments contract and series elastic component is stretched tendon and initially to cause rise in tension but when the te tension just exceeds the effect of the weight muscle as a whole begins to shorten to cause lifting up of the weight and then the tension remains constant throughout the remaining of shortening and the contraction recorded is due to shortening of the contractile component only now when in isometric contraction when the muscle is stimulated myofibrils shorten but in doing so stretch the series elastic component and thus keep the length of the muscle fibers constant then in 
isotonic contraction evolution of the heat is lesser than that of isometry and here evolution of the heat is more than that in isotonic contraction and in isometric contraction duration is duration is short here duration is long and in isotonic load determines the velocity of shortening and here the length of the sarcomere that determines the tension generated and in isotonic contraction mechanical efficiency is more but in isometric contraction mechanical efficiency is less thank you very much